Hi everyone, Tara Manisic here. I am a developer advocate for Progress and I am here in this video to guide you through the awesome new library built from the ground up for React from Kendo UI. In this video series so far, we have created a pretty robust, pretty awesome React application. And if you're like, Tara, I don't have an application made already. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you are on video five out of six. So the whole list of videos is down below in the comments along with the repository that we made um, in GitHub to walk you through all the code and show you all the changes we made through different commits so that you can keep up. So feel free to go there and then come back. If you have been following along and you're like, Tara, what more could we possibly code in this amazing application? Well, I want to show you that we also have React wrappers. And the Kendo UI team released these before releasing the library that they built from the ground up for React. So if we look at the documentation here, you see that we are on the Kendo UI uh, React page. And these are the React components that we have been looking at thus far, but there are more. So more things that you may not have seen on the React component side we have here at your disposal. So today we are actually going to look at the charts component for some data visualizations. We're going to allow the user to put some numbers into three sections to create a pie graph to visualize the difference between the in the grid that we made we had proteins sugars and carbs for the fruits and vegetables so we'll allow them to input these numbers and see how they look in a visualization of a pie chart so we will use the charts component first installing it importing it into the project adding it to our component binding the data that the user puts in then we can check out our awesome graph First thing we need to do as we see here is install our component. And we do that with npm i progress. And if you notice from the other videos, we have a different syntax chain for installing these modules. Instead of kendo react the component name, it's Kendo, the component name, React Wrapper. We have that in that now, and now we can bring it into our project in our app.js file. One thing before I forget, we also want to add the Kendo UI library since we are bringing in the wrapper. So to do that, can import at progress Kendo UI. And we have to install that using npm i at progress kendo UI. Awesome. Next, we want to bring it into our component. We'll go all the way down to where our render function is. Underneath our grid, we'll add it there. We'll give it a comfy little div home to live in. And like the other components, we open it up with an angle bracket component name. And we're going to send it the series defaults. And I'll show you what we're going to put in there. But if we take a look at the documentation for our chart, you can see that there is also a lot of information for the chart so we can understand all the different things that we can change and add to our chart to customize it even more. So if you see here, there's a ton of things that we can add. Today we're gonna keep it pretty simple, but for now, just know that we are going to be passing in this dot state dot series defaults. So we'll hold them all up in state. And the series is the information, the data that you're passing to your chart. So we're going to make this this dot 
state dot series and we're holding this in state because we're actually going to get that information from our users from some inputs so we have a div with our chart in it it looks like i am getting an error above in line six that i forgot to close out where i grabbed that module so we'll fix that and head back down because i showed you how we put the chart in but i would also like to add the inputs where we want to get the user information to fill up that data visualization. So first we'll add a div class name food graph inputs, obviously. And in here we will say that this is going to be the protein amount. And inside of there, we'll have an input that is type text and listen for on change like we did with our other inputs. And we're going to make a function up top that says handle protein change and close out the input and close out that p tag. Now, we want these for protein, carbs, and sugar, so I'm just going to repeat all of this. Okay, so we have inputs where the user can add this information. Now, let's go back up top to state to add some information we need to store in state. First, we're going to set series here, so it has something to put in there before a user can add anything. And we'll just set it to a simple 111. Then those series defaults that we talked about earlier, again, there's a lot of things that you can set here, but today we're just going to say that talking about all of this healthy stuff puts us in the mood for pie. A pie chart, obviously. <laughs> Next, we want to have a variable to hold our protein amount in the graph, our carb amount, and our sugar amount. And that's it, that's all that we need to save in state. So now let's go ahead and create those functions that we need to go off whenever there is a change in those inputs. And that is the handle protein change, handle carb change, and handle sugar change. They will look a lot like our handle name change functions. So if we go to the very last function to add some more, As you see, we're setting state like we did in our other handle functions, but for this one, since we want the graph to change as the user puts this information in, we're also going to set off an event to update the graph, which we will make in a second, but it's this.handle graph change. And close that out and replicate it for the other ones. Okay, so we have the handle change functions that we need for the inputs for the graph. And as you see, there's a lot of repetition going on. So this is definitely something that I would refactor in the future, or if you have any ideas of how to refactor it, uh, go for it, <laughs> or let me know. I think it's something that we could definitely do, but to keep things moving, let's go on to our handle graph change function that we wanna make here. And this isn't going to use anything uh, calling the event, so we won't add that in there. But we are, again, going to set state. And this is where we're setting that, um, that object that had the 111 inside of it for the data for the chart. So we're setting series array here now. And we're 
assigning the data inside that to an array containing all of those inputs that we made from the user input. Okay, so we have everything that we need to make our graph work. Let's take a look at this graph. We can enter our user input. We can enter our user input. And of course, having just one thing, it's gonna be a big circle. And we see we have a reactive graph that is styled all on its own. Nothing we had to do besides insert that default theme. And we are golden. <laughs> so that is how you use the wrappers library, the React wrappers library. Pretty similar to the true React components, but now you have even more things. That's a wrap for this video, but before you get too sad, there is one more video left in this series where we cover very exciting extras, like the fact that, did you know you have been coding a progressive web app this whole time? Shocking, I know. We'll delve into that and explain that more in detail in the next video, along with covering the rest of the component, components <laughs> that are at your disposal, because there's so many other ones that we were not able to touch on in this video series. But we'll look into those and we'll look at even more resources that you have available to you beyond this amazing video series to help you go further down the road and into the component libraries and everything that they can do. So remember, you can always reach out to us on Twitter at KendaUI and me personally at TZManix if you have any questions at all or just wanna chat. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for coding with me.